Hey, what's up y'all? It's Dr. Paul. I shot several hours of video doing tape removal on Noah's copy of Superman number nine. When I did it, I did not record regular intros and outros because I wanted to minimize the total amount of time that the comic was in the solvent. And I wasn't sure exactly how I'd present it to you. At first I thought maybe I'd show it to you at some kind of accelerated speed, 4X or 8X. But as I was thinking about it and as I was doing it, I realized because that work really needs to be done very slowly, I didn't want to present it to you sped up and give you anybody the impression that the work could be done or should be done quickly. I thought later about editing some of it out, but many of you have told me that what you love about my videos is the sort of gory detail that I go into. Um, as much as maybe it puts some people to sleep, others are really want to see every step because they want to try to do these, these techniques themselves. So what I've done is I've edited those hours into bite-sized chunks, and this is going to be your intro for all of them. Please remember that we have a giveaway every month. Link to that is at the bottom of the description. If you're enjoying this video series, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And lastly, if you are going to try any of these techniques out and you need to buy some materials, please use the Amazon affiliate links down in the description. Also helps the channel out. So enjoy. And until next time, take care of one another. So without any further ado, I have some Bestine in a 250 mil beaker. And as I've explained to you before, we want to apply the solvent as quickly and evenly as we can. And the reason for that is if you pour it here and you just sort of let it by capillary action go into the rest of the book, it can carry dirt with it and it will create tide lines. And we, we definitely do not want that. So I'm going to be introducing the solvent rather quickly into the bath. Lastly, I have another piece of Holitex close at hand here in case I feel while I'm working on this that I want to flip it really quickly. I can just throw that on there and then it's safe to handle. Um, one interesting thing you've heard me say over and over again, wet paper is weak paper, right? One interesting thing about these solvents though, they're not technically water, they're not wetting the paper in the same way. This solvent does not get into the paper chemical structure and weaken it the same way water does. So the paper actually stays fairly stable and strong with this particular solvent. I happen to know that, but you want to always be, you know, err on the side of caution anyway. So those are all my tools. I'm ready to go now. Because I'm going to work here, I think I'm actually going to start with it this way. I'll introduce the solvent everywhere. I'll lay that Holitex down, flip it, pour a little bit more solvent on the other side, and we will get started. Here we go. And you notice, obviously, paper gets dark when you have good penetration. And again, as I mentioned, capillary action, look how quickly it's working, even in that area that's double layered. All right. Now, I should be able to pick this up, as I mentioned, pretty easily and safely. Put a layer of Holitex down on top of it. Like that. Flip it. This solvent is not especially dangerous. It will dry your hands out is about all you need to be concerned with. Now I need to remove the top layer of Holitex. And it is going to be a little bit wet, so I have another photography tray. I'm just going to drop it in real quick so we don't get it making a mess. See if there's any areas I need to wet from this side. Looks like it's soaked pretty well. I'm looking at it with incident light just to see if there's any parts of the cover that look a little dry. But it looks pretty good, so I'm going to get started very gently. 
seeing if I can catch an edge of this tape carrier. The answer is not yet. One thing about tape is that you never really know till you start trying to take it off how much it's really on there. Because as that adhesive ages, it can harden, it can stay soft, it can turn brittle, it can seep down into the paper itself. It can do all kinds of things. And until you start to work with it, you don't actually know what it's doing. I am very gently just trying to catch the edge of this carrier. With almost no force at all. I do not want to put any force into the paper. I want to let the solvent do its thing. I will continue to sort of probe the edges. And when it works properly, it, it will almost just fall off. I want to get to that stage. I don't want to try to force it. You can see that the inks are quite stable in Bestine in this solvent. So, well, our rule of thumb is we want to get in and out of solvent baths as quickly as we can. We're not suffering, especially in this particular solvent with this particular book. Now, one thing that's interesting is I have a seam here that's actually tape over tape. So this is an opportunity for me to push a little bit harder on that edge than I normally would because I'm not actually pushing on the comic, I'm pushing on the tape, right? But that said, it still is not ready to start moving just yet. Now there you see I got my forceps underneath the edge. And that's what it takes. All right. Got my forceps underneath the edge of it. Now I can just put super gentle pressure. I'm gonna actually put a little bit more solvent right there and let it wick underneath there in that spot that I created. And now that I've got it started with those forceps, I'm gonna see if I can slide this micro spatula in there. There we go. Then I can just do gentle pressure with the micro spatula. It's not bad. Good start. One thing about these trays, although they work quite nicely for a lot of activities, they have these ridges that trap solvent underneath. So there's sort of a minimum amount of solvent you need to get a book wet 
which in some cases is more than you really want to use. But I have not found a better alternative that is chemically stable and commercially available and inexpensive, okay? We got the carrier lifted here now. And we could go about this carrier a couple different ways. I prefer continuing to work it this direction, just with the spatula. And just very gently going just very slight pressure. Now, there's an area that looks like it's still dry and not really soaked with solvent. And I don't trust that area. I do not want to pull the tape from that area because I'm concerned that we're going to rip the paper there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to introduce a little bit of solvent underneath and see if I can't get a little bit better penetration into that area. I sort of doubt it since we've already been here for quite a while. Yeah, okay, well, it looks like I can push a little bit of solvent in as I go, just like this, very slowly. And this is what it takes, boys and girls. The patience of Job. And I was right not to trust it. It took just a little bit of paper fibers off the front of the book. Right, we're going to see it right there. You see that? Just a tiny bit of yellow. All right, well, you want to get yourself in an ergonomic position because you're going to be sitting here a long time. Applying gentle pressure along this front. Trying to free up this carrier. And you can see it's working. And some areas are going a little faster than others. But you can feel it. If it takes more than just like minimal force, You're going too fast. It's almost like if you have a hot knife and you're trying to cut butter and you're wa you want to let the knife melt the butter. So you're going to just kind of set the knife there. You're going to apply just enough pressure so that the knife sort of stays on target. And you let the solvent do the work just like you would let the heat do the work of a hot knife going through butter, right? So while it is time consuming, look, I'm halfway across the page now. I think this bottom edge, I can feel it's just not quite as adhered as well as it is in this yellow area. So I'm able to move just a little bit faster through this area than I am up here. And there's some fibers that are already off. That wasn't my doing. Those were fibers that just were already loose. So another little spot of yellow ink is going to be missing just because we're taking the very top layer of paper been removed. And here's another spot of it. So let's see if we can't approach those areas from a different direction. 
and maybe save a little bit more of that paper. So from here on over, all that paper is not wanting to come loose from the carrier for one reason or another. So we may have to try to come at that from another direction. And we'll take a break and walk away from that. I think that this tape, somebody in the past tried to pull this tape up a little bit. I saw evidence of it in several places during the walkthrough. Let's give that area a little bit of time to soak and um, we'll come back and work on another area. We said we were gonna do this spot here first, but we found an easier place to start over there. So let's come back to this and see if we can't get it started and we can get this piece of tape off. There we go. All right, I was able to get the forceps under this piece. Now remember, we know that we have a rip right here. That's what this tape is there for to hold that rip together. So we wanna be especially gentle around this rip. We wanna remove the tape in such a way that we're not going, pulling against that rip at all. So I'm gonna come, the rip runs from here to here. I'm gonna come on this side and come down the rip lengthwise so that I'm not pulling the fibers in any direction. And there you go. There's one piece of carrier. Put it on a paper towel, get it out of the way.